Hello, my name is Larry Reisinger. I started volunteering as a docent here at the Garden of the Gods in 2007. What followed is a presentation I put together about the American Blackberry. I did that in 2012. It's updated as of December of 2020. I hope you enjoy it and learn a lot. Let's get started. The American black bear, here shown on the left, is a distant relative of some other North American bears. The brown bear, here represented by a grizzly, and the polar bear. The North American black bear is, however, a close relative of the Asiatic black bear. You can see the close family resemblance in these pictures. One theory of why this is so has to do with the land bridge that scientists tell us existed during the last ice age, linking Asia to North America. The Asiatic black bear may have migrated across to North America during that time. Black bears are the most common and widely dispersed bear in North America. They live from Alaska to Mexico and from the west coast to the east coast. They even live in Florida. A place where an animal lives is called its habitat. Most black bears like to live in or near forest. Forests are ideal for these shy animals. They find food, shelter, and room to roam there. Within its habitat, each bear has a certain territory or area within which it finds food and shelter. While grizzlies and other brown bears are very protective of their territory, black bears have been known to share part of their territory with other black bears. Also, because of our drier climate here in Colorado, there is less vegetation. This is their primary food source. So, their home range or territory is often much greater than for black bears in other parts of the country. There are an estimated 17,000 to 20,000 black bears in Colorado. Nationwide, there are more than a million. Early settlers viewed all bears as a threat to their animals, and black bears were often shot on sight. To protect a diminishing population of bears, in 1935, Colorado began to manage them and declared them a game animal, which afforded them some protection. Today, while still hunted, many Coloradoans view the black bears with some of the same reverence that Native Americans have always viewed them. Black bears are the only bears living in Colorado. Black bear fur is not always black. Here are some pictures of black bears whose fur is decidedly not black. Also, their fur varies in texture and thickness seasonally. In the fall, as the weather starts to cool, black bears grow a thicker layer of hair called guard hairs. That helps insulate them for the long winter hibernation. As spring arrives and they leave their dens, black bears gradually shed their guard hair as the weather warms. A black bear's claws are short and curved. Their claws and their strength make them very good climbers. In fact, they can climb better than their distant cousins, the brown bears. Here, a black bear mother and her cub demonstrate what good climbers they are. They are climbing a steep rock face in Mexico. Notice that the mother just walks off as the cub has to find a path on its own. I've heard reports of black bears climbing on the rocks in the Garden of the Gods also. This little cub doesn't have a safety rope either. Cub looks like it might make it.
now to find Mom. Colorado's black bears don't weigh as much as black bears in some other parts of the country, like the upper Midwest and along the Appalachian Mountains. This is because of the reduced amount and poorer quality of food sources here in Colorado, mainly due to a lack of precipitation. I'll talk more about their diet soon, but for now, know that adult bears in Colorado weigh from about 150 to 350 pounds. Black bears in some other parts of North America can weigh up to 600 pounds. The males, called boars, can weigh twice as much as the females, called sows. Black bears are very strong and can move heavy objects, like rocks, weighing as much as they do. On all fours, they are about three feet high but are about five to six feet when they stand on their hind legs. Although they have good eyesight and hearing, they rely mostly on their excellent sense of smell to alert them to dangers and to help them find food. As distant relatives of dogs, their sense of smell is over a thousand times more sensitive than our sense of smell. Every bear has a unique scent, and because of their excellent sense of smell, they can identify other animals and their own young easily. Male bears, called boars, often rub their fur against trees and urinate along paths to mark their territory and to attract females, called sows. A bear's scent is also in its scab and in the tracks it leaves. Like our lips, their lips are separated from their gums. This allows them to gather small berries. Their tongue is long and sticky, which allows them to find insects and ants in hard to reach places, like tree trunks. Because they are omnivores, they, like us, have incisors, canines, and molars. The canines are for tearing flesh, and the molars are for grinding herbaceous material. While black bears look slow and clumsy, don't be fooled. They can run very fast. They have been found to run up to 35 miles per hour. To put this in perspective, the fastest human used to be a gentleman called Usain Bolt of Jamaica. He ran at a top speed of 28 miles per hour. Also, like us, bears are flat-footed. While they usually walk and always run on all fours, they can easily stand on their hind legs, and often do when they are trying to identify something. As you might imagine, if you had slept for four or five months, you might wake up very hungry. Bears are no different. They come out of their dens in the spring and head for lower elevation to find food. Most of their diet, about 90%, is vegetation related. Things like grasses, flowers, leaves, and berries. However, they will eat meat or even insects. And if they come across a dead animal or an easy kill, they will feast. During the summer, black bears average around 4,000 to 5,000 calories a day. However, beginning in mid to late August and in preparation for winter, their daily intake increases to around 20,000 calories a day, and they feed for up to 20 hours. It's during the fall, and particularly during dry years with limited food sources, that most human bear encounters occur. 
This video shows why we recommend not putting out a bird feeder in bear country. Also, don't put out dog food and don't leave your trash outside. Put it out on the morning of a trash pickup. The video also shows the strength of this black bear. He takes down the bird feeder and the iron pole holding it with one arm. Black bears spend the better part of the cold months in a dormant state. During this time, they are not active and live off their fat reserves. It is towards the end of this period that the pregnant females give birth to their young. Black bear dens are usually caves, rocky overhangs, or depressions under fallen trees. Typically, bears choose dens that are sized for them, which helps them conserve heat. They only use a den once and find a new one the next winter. Newborn black bears, called cubs, are usually born in late January in litters of two to four cubs, towards the end of their mother's hibernation. At birth, the cubs are very small, only six to eight inches in length each weighing about a half a pound. They snuggle against mom and nurse until it's time to leave the den. By the time they leave, they can weigh from five to ten pounds. Here's the sound of some cubs nursing. Sal spends the first summer teaching her cubs survival skills. She teaches them where and how to find food. Bears have good memories and often return to favored feeding areas. Cubs stay close to mom and watch her for signs of danger. Predators like wolves, bobcats, and mountain lions are threats, particularly when the cubs are little. Here's the sound of a cub in distress. Here's the sound of a sow and a cub conversing. This video was taken by a couple from the comfort of their own car, about 10 feet away from the sow and her cubs. The black bears are feeding on clover. Remember, 90% of their diet consists of vegetation. Note how non-aggressive this mother bear is. She obviously doesn't view the people or their car as a threat. But also note that the people are not between her and her cubs. Cubs stay with their mother about a year and share a den with her after their first summer. The cubs then go off together during their second year of life, and they usually den together the next winter. Finally, during their third year, surviving cubs go off on their own to live a solitary life. Unless they have learned to associate people with food, Bears are very shy and wary, avoiding us as much as possible. Because of this, the likelihood of having an encounter with a black bear is very unlikely. 
you are much more likely to be harmed by another person than you are to be harmed by a black bear. However, if you do encounter a bear, there are a few things to remember to help avoid trouble. First, when encountering a bear, stand still, stay calm, and let the bear identify you and that you are not a threat. Also, never get between a sow and her cubs. Talk in a normal tone of voice and be sure the bear has an escape route. Never climb a tree or run. Sudden movements may provoke them, and because they are such good climbers and runners, you won't be able to get away. An example may help drive home this last point. A local man had family visiting from out of town and took them to a shop near the southern border of the Garden of the Gods. It was a hot summer morning and he was waiting outside when he heard a noise coming from a nearby dumpster. Curious, he went to investigate and just as he looked into the dumpster, a mother bear and her cubs started to climb out. Both the mother bear and the man were startled. The man ran and climbed a tree with the bear right behind him. The bear went up the tree after the man and bit his rump. The sow and her cubs then left the area. The man, when interviewed in the emergency room while getting stitches, said that he panicked running and climbing a tree when he knew better. As previously mentioned, the likelihood of a black bear attack is remote. Literally, a one in a million chance. However, if a bear does approach you, it may mean that it has become habituated to the presence of humans and may even associate us as having food. This could happen in areas where bears and humans frequent, like mountain campgrounds or in urban areas bordering forests, like Colorado Springs. So if a bear approaches, stand your ground, yell, or throw rocks at the bear. Again, never run or try to climb a tree. If you have bear spray, use it. And if attacked, don't play dead but do kick, punch, and hit the bear with anything available. Well, we've reached the end of this presentation on our furry friend, the American black bear. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. For additional information on the black bear and other animals of Colorado, check out the Colorado Department of Parks and Wildlife website listed here. Additionally, the Garden of the Gods Visitor and Nature Center has many displays and information about the plants and animals that live in the park, including the black bear. Come visit when you can.